Good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy. Um, for anyone new out there, I just let my guides channel through to you and get messages to you, so stay watching. Um, but today, I just wanted to touch a little bit firstly on my video yesterday where I mentioned Twitter and the takeover with Elon Musk. And I hadn't sort of thought about it, but um, a couple of you highlighted to me in your comments below, which was fantastic. Um, because a little, as I was doing the video, a little wren um, popped up just outside my window on a tree and it was the blue wren, which is usually the male. And I had just purchased a beautiful print here um, from a local photographer um, called Charles um, Davies. And you can check him out, he's on Instagram. He does photographs of animals in the region where I live, which is the Snow Mountains. And his, I, I've got quite a few um, prints of his photos. And for my birthday recently, I got one of Mr. and Mrs. Wren, um, which is the two wrens, the brown wren and the blue wren. And it actually arrived the other week and I've actually got it up on my wall now. Um, if you go, I've got a public Facebook page and I've actually posted the picture in there if anyone wants to go and check it out because I just thought it was just so synchronistic and bizarre. Um, I never ever see little blue wrens at this particular house so it was very unusual and like somebody else pointed out <laughs> thank you for my light bulb moment um the symbol of twitter is the little blue like wren the little blue bird like the the white outline with the blue surrounds <laughs> like the little blue bird so i guess we could take that as a very positive synchronistic sign today um so look go and check out my picture on my public facebook page um, of my two little wrens <laughs> and I think we could tie all that together that that's the guides <laughs> saying that maybe um, maybe this Twitter takeover is going to be a positive thing um, I hadn't joined the dots myself um, so thank you all you people out there for sharing your comments with me because it really um, helped me piece all that together as well and you know let's take that as a good sign from the universe that maybe things are <sighs> changing let's Absolutely hope so. He's a pretty strong character, Elon Musk. So, oh, anyway, let's take that as a positive. So I'm going to leave you with that bit there today about Twitter, which is, I think, a positive move in the right direction. <clears throat> he wants to get that freedom of speech going. So, you know, we can't, oh, we can't f f sort of not embrace something like that. It's a huge turning um, point, I think, for a lot of us. So I'll just close my eyes, getting back to the reading. <laughs> And we'll just see what else comes up today. <clears throat> yep, now I'm definitely getting um, the stars are aligning. So um, all the stars are lining up now. So when you think of um, the stars, and I talked about this in a song the other day, Sky Full of Stars by Coldplay, um, the stars are lining up. So this is where you're starting to see patterns forming. And for example, my Twitter one yesterday, but you're seeing, um, the, it's like they're showing the constellations, the different shapes, um, the things that are emerging now, um, and they're relating it to, it's like forming those patterns in the sky. Things are starting to come together, the stars, and it's almost, I, I guess you could also relate it to, if you looked up, it's like joining the dots. So people are kind of joining the dots now. Um, and, and that's what I'm kind of getting. It's that constellation of, of like completion. You know, there's things you see in the night sky and you can sort of form different shapes as well yourself. Um, and this is what they're kind of saying to me is now that things are, com are coming to that completion. So it's creating the form and the shape. Um, and that's people waking up clearly and about the joining of the dots people are starting to piece things together. Now, I know this has to be going on wherever you guys are living as well. The cost of living is transforming at the rate of knots. And this could be what I was talking about yesterday when I said that things were kind of gushing. Well, we know that the cost of living is absolutely getting out of control. Um, it, it's <laughs> on the news, of course. I always check the news just for a bit of a giggle. But the cost of living is absolutely getting skyrocketing. Um, I even went to the shops yesterday and I can normally get my washing powder for like under $10 and they only had bulk packs and they warned this would happen 
and they were like well over $30. So if you're buying everything in bulk, that's one hell of a grocery bill you're going to have at the end of that shop. So it is getting a little bit um, fast sort of for people to absorb. And I think this is going to send a lot of um, alarm bells excuse me, a lot of alarm bells to people now because they've got to wake up. Why is the cost of living going up? Now, we can't, they can't keep blaming Ukraine and Russia. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, they're just, it's, it's like, they're, they're directing you to where they want you to go. So they're going to start, obviously, bringing in more um, bulk shops so we're looking at the big corporate um shops moving in we know they're trying to knock out small business that's very obvious and then you're going to um be getting these bigger chains and bigger like corporatized shopping centers and i think we've got enough of those already here in australia we've got like coles woolies um aldi's you probably got those over there and they they just dominate everything that there's no small corner little supermarkets much anymore they just can't survive so again you know the cost of living is going up so everything's completely changing when it comes to purchasing our food and and um how we're buying our supplies this is this is kind of starting to change and it's starting to change in such an obvious way that people can't not see it so that's another veil if we think of the veils that um have had things hidden that's another veil that's starting to lift off people. And in Australia here, I don't know what's happening where you are, maybe let me know down below. But here come the interest rates. I knew that was going to happen. I actually said that interest rates were going to turn and they were making out it was going to be towards the end of the year. But they're going to actually do it before the election here, which is in May. So interest rates are already on the rise, as we know. And I do believe that housing prices are going to drop. So there's going to be this real imbalance of people's finances <clears throat> because they're living in this sort of false, um, I guess you could say, equity. People think their house is worth this, but when interest rates and things go up, it, it causes other things to get out of balance. So I'm getting that definitely that housing prices could drop. I mean, we know housing is a cycle the way it sort of rises and falls anyway, but I think that's going to really start to affect people because next thing you're paying off this ginormic mortgage and but it's not worth what it was before so you're still paying like it's like you're paying off thin air so this is what's going to cause another veil to lift this is causing a lot of this frustration and and this is the new fear dynamic we know that's the way things are going we know the virus is still like hovering around i mean gosh i think even the people that have been jabbed um are still getting frustrated about just that constant um boostering and it's just it's, that's starting to take a toll on them too because now they are starting to question that narrative definitely i definitely get that today gosh i had a woman come into um our work yesterday we own a business and i haven't seen her for a long time and I'm, i know her very very well and i went to give her a hug and she nearly had a heart attack she said oh don't come near me Oh, I'm going on holidays and I don't want to get sick. And, and she like all freaked out. And Tim and I were just like looking at her. It was just really sad and I respected that. You know, like I told myself yesterday, I have to respect other people's viewpoints. And so I stayed like behind the counter. But when she left, Tim and I were like, oh my gosh, she was so full of genuine fear. And, and you just think, but you're about to get on a plane with a ton of strangers who have probably got the virus but they're so scared of anyone coming near them and it's just it's turned into just a sad sort of cold world hasn't it when you can't even give somebody you care about a hug um <clears throat> and that's just an experience that i had yesterday but that's a highlight that people are still living in that fear because they're still getting that narrative and they're still confused but some people are still locked in it and that's why i said it's important to respect that because their veils are still kind of lifting you know they'll still be talking about the cost of living or whatever but they're still not quite seeing it but the veils are lifting um i'll just see what else we get today <clears throat> now i'm definitely getting the message today um that you need to take a chance now if you're watching this video 
the guides are saying to you, you need to take a chance. Now, I feel like some of you out there might be um, a little hesitant um, when it comes to like changing your life. Now, this could either be about moving. Um, it could be about restructuring your finances. And it could also be around... It's sort of saying to me like job share. Um, some of you out there might be looking at job share situations that you're trying to create um, things that best suit you. And it's saying to take a chance. <clears throat> like if you've got that offer to, to have a shorter week and to work two days instead of three or four, you know, maybe it is time to take those things and really start living and enjoying your life. So I'm definitely getting that today is take a chance. You might be wanting to try something new. It might be that you're wanting to start something online. You might want to do YouTube like I am here, you know. Um, you might have things that you want to say or, or ways that you can help people in, in um, different areas. Um, you don't have to do psychic predictions and readings um we've all got different skills that that we bring i mean i've even got gardening videos for anyone out there that's a gardener i've got a few gardening videos as well because that's my passion and um they're things that you can share with people you might be really into woodwork or you, you know there's other things that you can do but it feels to me like you want to take a chance so if you're watching this video take that chance don't be um don't live in fear because that life lived in fear is a life half lived. And we know since we let go of ridiculous fears that we were all holding on to, I know I was, um, we started to move forward. And I think that's what the guides are trying to say to you today. Like, take a chance. Don't be fearful. Just take that chance. And they're saying like, when you push through fear... You look back and you go, oh, that wasn't so bad after all. It's like anything. It's like when you go for a job interview, like you do your driving test and you're so nervous and then you get to the other side and you go, oh, I had myself all worked up for nothing, like, and things go really well. So that's what the message is that the guides are saying to you. Um, just take that chance. You can be you can be um, uncertain and and when you're in that fear, like I said, fear is an energy that cripples people up and it stops you moving forward. So you have to find those ways of pushing through that fear and like opening up. And I have got videos on fear for anyone who is going through this at the current moment. Um, <clears throat> I've got some on fear and anxiety and these kind of topics too that you can check out. But push through your fear and that's the message today from the guides because you can build fear and um, uh, uncertainty into a big mountain and sometimes it's just a little molehill so that's the message today um just take a chance take a chance now i'll see what else we get today <clears throat> okay i'm getting that um people are grabbing and like clutching at straws so when you think about someone like clutching at straws they're really trying to hang on um they they're grabbing like it's a kind of a funny saying actually isn't it when you think about it clutching at straws it's kind of weird but what they're kind of saying is that they they they're trying to hold on like so i believe this is about the narrative and look this could be around um the twitter and the releasing of like free speech uh, i feel like government is clutching at straws um i think biden's not happy about the tweet takeover we know he wouldn't be happy about any of this and anyone who doesn't want truth coming out we're going to find these governments and these um, tyrannical leaders are going to really ramp this up because they're going to be clutching at straws and grabbing at the straws because they don't want anything coming out. Um, it was okay before. like They could put the spot fires out and they were sort of keeping on top of it and keeping people quiet, brought in all the protesting bills, as we know in, for you guys in Canada and here in Australia, we've got protesting bills. I think probably New Zealand even has two over there. <laughs> Just let me know if you're living there. But I I really believe that they're going to be really trying to stomp and, and put down their presence because they, as in let people be known, that they're um, going to be these righteous fighters. And this is government. This is government and parliamentary leaders because they do not want their agenda to be unraveled is probably the word I'm looking for. Um and they're going to 
as we know, they're going to spray, and I do believe it's around Twitter, or it could be still Joe Rogan. He's been copying it as well, and so many people who are trying to be honest, including Robert Malone, the Dr. Robert Malone, and lots of other people. Um, there's going to be this spray from government. They're going to, like, spray out all their, like, toxic venom because they don't want their agenda to be unraveled. And, and it could be unraveled just like that. Um, so we're going to see them kind of, this is interesting, we're going to kind of see them rising up. So we're going to see them trying to get more power. Um, and they're trying to get, um, it's like they're going to try and get the power of the people behind them. So they're going to try and get people to come on board with their viewpoints. They're very, very smart. I've always said that. It's like they um, regroup, have a meeting, and then they come up with a new plan. So this is what they're going to do. Government and dictatorships and all these tyrannical leaders, they're going to come up with this way of trying to get the people behind them again. And I don't think it's like mass psychosis. This is going to be different. This is going to be... <clears throat> um, oh, okay, here we go. They're going to work on the um, mental health of people. <clears throat> so they're going to say this is... Um, unhealthy for young people to be exposed to this kind of false info oh, false information and lies and deception. Um, they're going to use that narrative of the mental health, and I do believe that's what they're going to push because they're going to say, no, this is this is all just affecting people's mental health. Um, not that the last two years have affected people's health, being locked up and bloody vilified, of course. Oh my gosh. Um, so this is, I think, what they're going to start using that. No, this is not, I mean, mind you, Instagram, like, that's healthy for young girls and, and guys, like, trying to look perfect when people are using um, phone apps to make themselves look absolutely beautiful when they're cutting off their stomach and tucking in their thighs. How, <laughs> you know, that can't be good, I wouldn't think, for people's health. But all of a sudden, when the free speech has an opportunity to arrive on our doorstep, the um, the governments are going to... I really feel they're gonna, there's going to be a lot of backlash and there's going to be a lot of that um, oh, that spray. It's going to be a real spray of, of like words and, and fight and, and that kickback from government and parliament. They're not going to like it. They're not going to want to have people um, standing against them. And, and they know in, in any platform, and look, I do get Twitter. We'll just we'll have to see what comes of it. But they know if people... Um, get together en masse, that is their fear because they know there's power in the people. And I've always said that to you, when we're supporting each other and we have each other's back and we, we build in strength and numbers, that gives us power to push back. And, and now this is what's going to happen. I feel like they're going to push back. But they haven't got the mass psychosis now because I do believe that the mass psychosis has really waned. Like It's like when you get the jab, <laughs> it wanes over time. So they hit them really hard, get them locked into that mass psychosis, feed them, feed them, feed them the information they want to lock them into. But then it wanes over time. And this is why I'm seeing now that the veils are starting to lift and, and people are, you know, we're getting the full constellations of the stars now because people are starting to join their dots. So everything's starting to add up and it's starting to come together and make sense. Um, I know if you're watching this video that you've already joined the dots. We're pretty much at the last number of the picture <laughs> and we're just sort of sitting back now and waiting for everybody to finish. It's like when you're in an exam and you finish early, you just sit back quietly and, and you put your pencil down and you just sit and wait <laughs> for the, either the bell to ring or the people to say you can go and pencils down, you can all leave now. <laughs> so we're just kind of, it's like we finished our exam early and we're just sitting there like in the classroom like waiting now. So that's what I'm getting but I do feel there's going to be this real um, push from government to kind of try and get the people behind them again because they're going I feel to use mental health because they know and I can tell you now mental health is absolutely on the rise through the roof crazy we know that the last two years God in Shanghai I would say that whole town's gone into bloody would need to go into the psych unit they that whole oh my goodness that whole city would have to be really, really damaged now. And and this is what I'm getting in, in even um, the rest of the world is that mental health is 
at an extreme level. Now, they're going to have to use narratives that are going to um, sort of put those mental health issues into other categories. They don't want to be blamed for the mental health issues and people suiciding and collapsing into depression. Um, they want to actually um, be seen as the saviors. And we've got to remember that. God, we only need to look at Trudeau and he wants to be so respected around the world and Macron and all these kind of leaders. They want to be respected. So they don't want people thinking that their lockdowns, their implementing of um, decisions in the parliament and all this has caused people to have mental issues. So they're going to look at um, this kind of thing now to roll it out because we know that... Um, if they can redirect the pe people behind them, they're going to fool them and trick them again, which isn't hard to do, as we know, that, oh, no, it's all this, um, there's not enough um, social protection on these platforms and we're going to have to even pull things in tighter because this is, is getting crazy now. It's affecting people's mental health. And that's what I honestly feel. I feel like they're going to start to... Um, change things up again in order to um, not be blamed for um, a lot of these issues that are now really rising and I mean really rising in all age groups right down to teenagers you think young kids that have been locked down like in Melbourne here they were locked in their homes for two years he even locked down the playgrounds in Victoria um, Dan Andrews so you know, these are the kind of things that do take a toll. It mightn't affect you straight away, but as time goes on, these things rise up, as we know, and and it causes, as we know, for the awakening process, the soul breakdowns, um, and that's why we're just sitting back now. It's very important, and I say it nearly in every video, to protect yourself and just sit back and just allow things to happen in front of you. Um, so I'll just see if there's any final messages today. Oh, I still get that government is really trying to hide a lot. And look, that pretty much goes around what I was just saying. But I still feel there. Oh, it's oh, Look, I'm going to go back to the iceberg analogy where there's the little bit of ice on the top and beneath the surface of the water is this humongous <coughs> heap of information. And I, I sort of, we don't know all of it. We're getting to know more of it because things are being exposed. It's almost like, I guess we could look at, climate change you know that um i guess we could say the water's um going down and that more of the icebergs probably being exposed um is a way that we could probably put it but it's almost like the icebergs um getting unstable now so it's like it's almost could rock over and imagine if that happened if it the iceberg reversed and all the everything was exposed on the top and just a little bit under the water i would love that to happen um but not impossible because things are shifting and things are changing so i'll leave you with that iceberg analogy today that the water is going lower and more is being exposed we don't have it all and and look we may never have it all but the fact that we have anything and any truths coming out, we've got to take that as a real win. And yeah, I just I just want to leave you with that great synchronicity that I did have yesterday about the the little blue wren. Please go check out my Facebook um, page. Um, I've actually got it on my Instagram page too. For anyone that follows Instagram, Chrissy Fitzgerald seventy nine. I'm on there as well. You can check out some of my garden pics too. I've got them on there. Um, and my doggos are on there too, for anyone who loves my dogs. Um, but the bird, the little wren picture is on there too. And you can check that out because he was a little blue one. And the fact that I was talking about Twitter with the bird, I hadn't even pieced it together. So thank you for commenting below and letting me know that. So I'm going to leave you with that great synchronicity today. And we're going to take that as a great tick and a great sign that some of these freedom of speech might finally be starting to happen. And people remember, are joining the dots. So thanks heaps for watching today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Um, I'm off to the gym. I'm trying to get myself healthy. Um, anyone new to my channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you know when I pop up. Um, and hit the like buttons because that always helps too. And I will say goodbye from Australia and I'll see you very soon. Bye.